some delay happens to our prayers in life so that we can be stronger in law in the Lord, so that we can get closer to God, so that when the blessings come in that high magnitude, we will have grown, matured enough to manage him. You don't want God to give you a blessing that you cannot manage. You don't want God to give you a miracle that will draw you away from the faith. So when you are praying to God and you are thinking God is delaying, God is preparing you for the quality of the blessing that is coming. So the principle of God in all this waiting time is that you stay committed to him 100%. Is that you stay trusting him 100%. Instead of you to complain about that situation, about the delay of that miracle that you are waiting for, the, God is expecting you by principle. Don't complain. Show your commitment. You were praying one hour before on that request. Switch it on to two hours. You are studying in fellowship for 30 minutes before. Because there is delay, switch it on to two hours and more. Improve your commitment. Improve your trust in the Lord. And then you will see God coming through for you. The issue with us, and that, and that is where the peace is lost, is that we are looking up onto external factors to find our peace and that will never happen the only prince of peace that I know in the Bible is who? Jesus so if you must have peace in that situation your commitment your trust in Jesus the prince of peace must be complete 100% that is the principle of God for you and for me to follow there is no shortcut to it so don't see God as being bad, delaying that answer prayer. He can do it. But he's preparing you so that when the blessing comes, you will have grown matured enough to manage it. I pray the blessings of God will not push you away from the presence of God. Because that has happened. Somebody that used to be so poor, suddenly God makes him rich, and then he prefers to spend the money to carry women. So if God delays that person, you know, from answering him before he gets rich so that he can grow and be solid in Christ, so that when the blessings come, he can recognize God and return the blessings back to him. So you must follow God's um, principle. You also must follow God's priority. Number three, follow God's priority. When you do this, you can be sure you will find peace in Christ. That is when that word, may, will turn to will for you. Follow God's priority. Misplaced priority is what wastes people's time in life. When you don't know how to start or where to start, then people start anywhere and the journey of six months becomes two years. May that not be you in Jesus' name. Follow the priority of God. When people lose a sense of priority, they will engage themselves, burning time, trying to catch up. And there's nothing worse in life than burning time. It is worse than burning money. Because when you burn money, you can make another money. Is that correct? But when you burn time, you waste time, it's gone. Because time, by definition, is a measure of eternity. Once it's gone, it's gone. So you don't want to troubleshoot and be trying an error. Follow the priority of God. And what is God's priority? Kingdom business. Kingdom business. And we read that in the, in the Bible. Matthew, 3, that is, Matthew 6, 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all other things will be added unto you. So instead of you to want to go chase other things and expect the kingdom to come, it makes the journey longer. And that is what many of us do. We want to keep up with three schedules to make more money. And then we would say, oh, the kingdom is waiting. I can come back to the kingdom. You are making the journey longer. There is nobody 
that prioritize God's kingdom that is never a success in life. But seek first. That is the priority of God. The kingdom of God. Priority of God is to show love for God. You seek his kingdom, you show love to him. Mark chapter 12, verses 29 to 30. When the scribe came to ask Jesus, so which is the first law in all of these commandments? What did Jesus tell him? Jesus answered, love the Lord your God with the whole of your heart, the whole of your mind, your heart, and your strength. Those are the first God's priority. His kingdom and the love for him. And how do you show your love for God? How do you show that you are prioritizing the kingdom business? It is that you evangelize everywhere you go. You preach the, uh, the kingdom of God. When you evangelize, you are seeking to increase kingdom's population. That is the kingdom business. You are in that place of your work, even though it's not the job that you like to do at this time. Let them know that you are a child of God. If the president of your company comes around you, let him know that you stand for God. But what, what do we do in Canada? We take Canada as not being in the, in the map of heaven. Oh, this is Canada. You cannot preach Jesus. If the LGBTQ community are proud to speak to what they do, I put it to you, you must be more proud to speak to the Jesus that you have. Preach Jesus. Stand for Jesus. Let them know that there is no other shortcut to heaven than to accept Jesus. That way you are doing the kingdom business. That way you are showing your love for God. That way you are showing God that you are prioritizing his agenda. And there is nobody on earth that prioritizes Jesus' agenda and end up a loser. And you will not be the first. Praise the Lord. Tell your neighbor, I will preach the gospel. I will preach the gospel. Paul says to you, be instant in season and out of season. You know what that means? Stand for God when it's convenient and when it's not convenient. You don't wait until you get all the money. You don't wait until you get your dream job before you begin to engage for God. In the little way that you have, start to show Jesus. Start to shine for Jesus. And that way you will see God prioritizing your request. Everything that troubles you would go in a matter of time. So let's prioritize the kingdom business. That is the way to find peace. That's the way to find peace. And the final one, and I'll spend a bit of time in this, is that you accept God's provision. Accept God's provision. Accept God's provision. We started with saying that you must recognize God's presence. Number two, follow God's principle. Number three, follow God's priority. Number four, the final one, accept God's provision. And what is the provision of God? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. I love John 14, 26, but the helper, the Holy Spirit. You see, the first adjective that was used to qualify the Holy Spirit, the helper, that is his job. So why do you choose to carry the burden of life on your head when you have the helper that can help you? Why? But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, what will he do? He will teach you all things. I love that, amen. The mistake we make as Christians is to reduce Holy Spirit to speaking in tongues. If the Holy Spirit can teach you a language you did not learn in school, He can teach you idea that will give you breakthrough. He can teach you idea that is not written in the books that you need to restore your peace. He can tell you how to navigate on familiar terrain. Are you with me this morning? 
So you cannot have the Holy Spirit and be in confusion. That is the point. Because the reason why people lose their peace is because they are confused. Everything they do is not working. They try this, it doesn't work. They try that, it doesn't work. They send this, it comes back, no response. Let the Holy Spirit minister to you to give you direction. And then one shot, you hit it. When you have the Holy Spirit, you will gain time because you will not be troubleshooting life. You will be approaching life with specific and accurate understanding of what to do per time. And when you do that, you are gaining time. I love John 16, 13. John 16, 13, it says that the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. He will guide you into all truth. He will tell you the things to come. There is no better situation a man can be than to have a foresight of what will happen tomorrow. He gets you ready today. He gets you ready. To, those who are successful in life are people with foresight. And here you have the Holy Spirit, the master foresight, who can teach you, who can tell you what will happen in the future. So accept the provision of God. It is the Holy Spirit. As a child of God, the Holy Spirit comes to you as a gift. The moment you say yes to God. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send, you have received that Spirit. It is for you to accept it. It is for you to accept it. I will tell you my example. When I was in the university, I was about to um, go for youth service. We all know what youth service is. And God told me through the Holy Spirit that I'm going to go for youth service late. I'm not having extra year, but I will be late to go. And I couldn't figure it out. I've checked all my results. They were all good. And I was waiting how it's going to happen. The moment they released the first batch of those that were going, my name was not there. Now I knew where God was coming from. All of my friends were concerned for me. They were troubled for me. But I was at peace with myself because I had a foresight of what was going to happen. The Lord showed me in that vision how I would get there about like three days late and then the gate would be closed. And exactly this way it played out. Let me tell you the good thing about relating with the Holy Spirit. After like one week that everybody had gone, I was still at home, the center's home. We were going to make trouble as students. But I knew that God was working. On the afternoon, when it was going to be the final day, I was sleeping. Very heavy rain was falling. And I had a tap in my body. Go to school and collect your letter. It's ready. And I jumped to go and see my dad. Give me money. I need to go to school. My dad trusted me that I will not play games. He gave me money, he said, but he was late. He said, don't worry, I will go and come back so soon. And I got to the man's office. The man was locking his door. I got there, I said, I came for my letter. He said, what's your name? I gave him my name, he checked the list. Oh, your letter came just in the morning. I got the letter, I got to the camp, and they announced that the camp is closed for all late arrivers. So when everybody was troubling for me, I was at peace because I had the helper, the Holy Spirit, who has told me what was going to happen. So when you accept the provision of God in the Holy Spirit, you will not lose your peace over anything because you know the direction that God is leading. You know the intention that God was trying to achieve. So when you have the Holy Spirit, it reminds you on God's promises. When things are going tough, when things are going tough, Holy Spirit reminds you of God's promises that when you, you know, go through the rivers, you will not be drowned. When you go through the fire, you will not be consumed. That will stimulate your courage to stay peaceful. When you have the Holy Spirit, He relieves you of the pressure of life because that is His job to help you carry your weight, the comforter. So you want to have peace. In this treasured world, accept the provision of God in the Holy Spirit. Relate with him more. Don't limit him to speaking in tongues. Everybody is speaking in tongues now. 
but relate with him at a higher level. See him as a senior partner who can navigate the journey of life for you. Who can, you know, reveal to you the plan of God concerning your life ahead of time. And then your soul will find rest in God. Your soul will live peaceful in this troubled world. How many of you are going to relate with the Holy Spirit better from today? May the Lord help you. Let's rise to our feet. This is the Liberty Assembly. Raising a glorious generation.